for the second example, we're going to look at the case where we have um, a nonlinear relationship of y equals a, b, x, and we're then going to model it using log y equals log b, x plus log a. So we've got a nonlinear relationship. And then we're going to model this relationship using logs and we get a straight line graph. So log y replaces the y value in y equals mx plus c. Log b replaces that m value and log a replaces that c value. So in the question that was on the previous slide you've just seen, it says the graph represents the growth of a population of bacteria P over T hours. The graph has a gradient of 0.6 and meets the vertical axes at 0, 2 as shown. So we know that we've got the gradient is equal to 0.6 and the y-intercept is equal to 2. Just writing down the key information here. It says a scientist suggests that this growth can be modelled by the equation P equals AB to the power of T. So we've been told that it can be modelled like this in a non-linear relationship, which means we can write the relationship, sorry, we can um, draw a straight line to represent this relationship using logarithms. So for part A, it says write down an equation for the line we would use when modelling this using logarithms. Well, we're going to use this form of the straight line here. So we would have log P is equal to the gradient, that's 0.6, and we're going to add that y-intercept. So the reason why we have used this form here is because we have been told that the growth can be modelled in this form, that form y equals ab to the power of x. Sorry, that should be a t there, not an x. For part b, we, it says, using your answer to part A or otherwise, find the values of A and B, giving them to three significant figures when necessary. So we've just worked out that log P is equal to 0.6 T plus 2. Now it's important to remember here that log is the same as log base 10. And we know that log base a n equals x implies that a to the power of x equals n. So this equation here, we've got log base 10 of p is equal to this expression in terms of t. So our base is 10. We're raising 10 to the power of this 0.6 t plus 2, that is equal to p. So I've just used this logarithm with base 10, which is in this form here, and rewritten it as that form there. So the left hand side, we've got 10 0.6 t multiplied by 10 squared, rewriting this um, expression here in terms of sorry, using your laws of log of uh, indices, that's equal to P. So I know that P is equal to 100 times by 10 0.6 T. I'm going to rewrite that as P is equal to 100 times 10 to the power of 0.6 all to the power of T. And then if I use my calculator to work out 
what 10 times uh, 10 to the power of 0 0.6 is. That is 3.98. So we've got 3.98 to the power of t. Now, we were told that our equation is modelled as p equals ab to the power of t. So clearly a is equal to 100 and b is equal to 3.98. So we started off with our logarithm here that was based on that straight line graph. And we've written, rewritten it in terms of p equals ab to the power of t. So rewritten it as um, the scientists suggest that this growth can be modelled by that equation to find our values of a and b. Part c says interpret the meaning of the constant a in this model. So a is that value of 100. So that value of 100, when t equals 0, p is equal to 100 multiplied by 3.98 to the power of 0, which is 100 multiplied by 1, which is 100. So when t equals 0, p equals 100, which is our value of a. So that means 100 must be um, the initial size of the bacteria population, because that's what our value of P is, the bacterial population. Remember, we discussed this in a previous lesson about modelling that when you are asked to interpret one of the values, always try and see what that initial value is. When you put in, when you substitute in t equals zero, find out what that means in terms of the value you are being asked to discuss.